And shopping spree has begun. I'm headed into Home Depot for the upcoming project collaboration. I'm so excited. This is going to be so much fun. There's that magic word to look for and all of those yellow tags. Love it. Now it's time to dress up your tiles this fall. How about simply cutting out an eight inch by eight inch square piece of burlap and measure out your felt to cover the back of the tile and you've got a whole new look. Here's how I did it. Place your tile on a paper plate and spray it with adhesive spray. Place your towel in the center of the burlap and press downward. Now spray the back of the tile with the spray adhesive. Fold your burlap inward from the center outward. Try not to go all the way to the corner. Do that on all four sides. Pull it tightly. Leave your bunny ears on all four corners. And then press the corners inward to ensure that they're nice and smooth. Now cut away the bunny ears. When cutting away those ears, make sure you start your cut about a quarter of an inch away from the corner, like so. That way you can avoid fraying over time. Tilt your scissors upward at an angle and cut. Now spray the back of the tile with more spray adhesive. And simply add the felt. And there you have it. Since I've chosen to work with tiles this week, which is basically a blank canvas, I decided to add a piece of decor to my kitchen that I've always wanted. I've always wanted the chalkboard, and I haven't quite managed to pick out the one that I wanted. So what I've done is decided to paint this 16 by 16 inches piece of tile. I'm going to paint it chocolate. I'm sure my husband and boys are going to pay attention to it every time they walk by to see what wonderful messages I'm going to leave for them. Now, I'm not going to sand this piece. I'm simply going to paint it directly onto the tile. Now, here's the thing. If you want to use this piece as is, you simply would take some sandpaper and sand it down and make it a little bit rough. You're just removing the protective finish on the top. Now, if you don't want to do that, by all means, try my chalk paint recipe. I'll list it in the bottom comments and simply whip up a batch. It's simply two tablespoons of plaster of Paris 
and then adding one tablespoon of water to one third cup of paint. That'll make it nice and thick and grainy, which is what a chalk paint should be. So I painted the back, and as you can see, it's starting to dry. But you also can see some of the paint kind of sticking to the waffle areas on the back of the board. Now, in order to get those to dry very quickly, take your paintbrush and just tap those down, and you're basically spreading out that paint. So, and in just a little while, maybe in 20 minutes or so, this is going to be dry. And that's how you get the chalk paint to dry a little bit faster. You want to have multiple coats of paint on your chalkboard, especially considering it's going to be used a lot. You're going to be writing and erasing. So the first time you paint it, you want to paint vertically. Let that dry, and then the second time around, you want to paint horizontally. So you're going to do that at least maybe two or three times. It's solely up to you. I prefer to go higher than that. I just want a thick finish on there that'll last a long time. First, I purchased a 16 by 16 inch square piece of faux marble tile. And I absolutely love the colors. They are cream and they are taupe and a hint of gold added to that is gonna give my checkerboard a hint of class. First thing I need to do is turn it over on the other side and simply spray paint it very lightly. Now, while the spray paint on the back of the tile that's going to be used for the checkerboard is drying, I'm actually going to preview a little template of how the checkerboard effect is going to look. So here's what I've done. I purchased two small sheets of tiles, and these had 36 units on each sheet. I took a box cutter, and I basically cut them apart. Very easy to do. Ran it down the seam here, and then ran it along the front side, and then basically snapped them apart. I then place them on top of my tile like so, and they're the back of one, the front of one, the back of one, the front of the other. So now you see the checkerboard pattern. So now all I have to do is remove the tiles that I do not want to be a part of this process, or at least not covered in gold spray paint. I actually have another upcoming project that I will need these for, and they will need to be spray painted gold, so why not maximize my time now? So I'm lifting off these that I do not want to be a part of the process, and there you have it. Do you see that checkerboard pattern starting to form? Nice. Our spray paint is now dry, so now let's turn this over and place our tiles in our checkerboard formation. Our tiles are down, and now we simply apply our spray paint. And we hold it about 12 to 20 feet away, because I really just want it to fall onto the tile. Our gold spray paint is starting to dry, so I will slowly continue to move my tiles away. I purchased these wooden bases from Michaels. They come in a packet of six of them, and I've got four spray painted gold. They're gonna be placed underneath the checkerboard. They were as little as one dollar. What a deal. Now these are decorative glass gems, which I purchased from the dollar store. They're actually going to be used on our checkerboard. Simply going to lightly spray paint these gold on the bottom, and the other half I'm basically going to hit with a little glitter and leave those clear. Mission accomplished. And just add a little bit of your glitter spray to the top of the checkerboard. Just give it a little bling. You know what I mean?
Here we are my amateur decorating friends, three unique projects by simply using tiles in a very unique way. We have beautiful coasters that are perfect for the fall season and that can adorn any type of tablescape and will fit in very nicely all year long. And then we have our lovely checkerboard that can be used anytime, anywhere, not to mention it can also be placed on the dining room table and added to a centerpiece or any tablescape. And then not to mention, last but not least, we have our fun, loving, whimsical chocolate chalkboard. And I absolutely am so excited to have this in the kitchen. It already serves its purpose. I left a few messages already. And um, even though I didn't mention this earlier, even this little pumpkin is functional. You see, I got it from the dollar store and inside of it is a little piece of chalk. I just simply spray painted the top of this little dish gold and added the chalk to it. And underneath is a small piece of felt from a protective surface kit. And there it is. This is my eraser and the chalk. And they can be easily found when someone needs to leave a message or erase one away. I thank you so much for watching. If you've not subscribed to my channel, I hope you will consider subscribing today. This is Decorative Tiles Part 1 and there is much more to come. Thanks a lot for being here and I hope to see you again soon.